Yo, what is up, guys? Beautiful day. Probably my second or third favorite AMC day in six and a half months of being in this madness. That was super cool to watch. That was about a 24, 25% swing on the day. Dipped way the hell down. I thought we were going to keep going down. But boy, oh boy, hit that 38, 39 buckaroos and fired right back up. That was outstanding and a lot of fun to see. To do that, gain it all back, run up, consolidate, and then run up a little bit more at the end of the day, finishing at, what did we finish at, 49.10 and after hours? So about $11 on the day from the, the low of the day, but that was a lot of fun. That's probably my second favorite or third favorite day in AMC. First mine would be all of June. That consolidation to me is probably by far the, the biggest, the best thing I've seen with AMC so far. Obviously, going over 70 bucks was big, but a day like this today, that was a lot of fun to watch. I seen a lot of people gobbling up those cheapies down there, 42, 40, 39, 38 bucks. So hopefully a lot of people that were in, you know, maybe you're in the high 50s or 60s to grab some of those cheaper shares, get your dollar cost average down. That's outstanding. But that was a lot of fun. So give yourselves a pat on the back, a kick in the butt, whatever you got to do. But that was super fun to watch. Good job. Good job, everyone. Um, and also, too, you guys, the last couple of days, I always think to remember, you know, these risk management teams over at these hedge funds, uh, it's kind of mind blowing, I guess, when you, you know, either they're in too deep, they have no choice but to continue shorting. I get it. Just, just remember, you and I are not losing anything. We're not selling anything. We're holding the stock. These guys are down a lot of money. But just look at this on a day like this. They're down right here, expected to have lost nearly 800 million as Unusual Whales tweeted this out. So just remember, it's hundreds of millions of dollars a day. They are losing their Azteca. They are just losing their shorts. So keep that in the back of your, your mind as uh, the days go on. Um, look at here, Citadel. Of course, we got to talk about Citadel. Hedge fund Citadel hiring from rival funds as some exit. We know that. Citadel has been hiring from rival funds in London as some long-serving staff leave. We touched on that a couple of weeks ago. The fund is understanding to have recruited Sean Murphy, a former J.P. Morgan M&A associate and event-driven analyst at London-based Carlson Capital as an equities portfolio manager. It's also hired Brian Johnson from Wellington Management as an FX portfolio manager. And then down here, Citadel declined to comment on the exits. Of course they did, right? Oh, that's talking about those guys exiting there. But either way, we know. Screw you, Citadel. Look at this one. Short sellers lose $44 billion in 30 days. What I really love about this little article right here is all we need to see is this. The number one source of short seller losses. AMC by a wide margin at $2.8 billion. AMC was also the number two stock in the entire market and increased Short exposure in June, a little behind Tesla, which has a market cap 25 times as large, right? So that's pretty cool. Just in case you're wondering, 7-8-2021 AMC Threshold Securities. We're still there, boys and girls. We are still there. And then also this son of a gun here. What's Jimmy Kramer doing? We can't go a couple weeks without talking about Kramer. I just hate his ugly mug and his bozo the clown look. But look at this son of a gun here. AMC trick. Trick shorts. Option traders join the game from today. This is all we need to read. In the pre-market Thursday morning, Jim Kramer took to Twitter to call on the Security and Exchange Commissioner to stock the games he says are happening with a number of Reddit favorite stocks. Jimmy, pull yourself together. And I forgot I was going to pull up that other tweet. If you guys haven't seen it, go to his stupid Twitter page. He's got a couple sentences put together. He sounds like an eight-year-old schoolboy, but he's asking this Twitter guy what his real name is or you're hiding behind a fake. Dude, really? Is he really doing that? Dude. <laughs> the guy makes enough money. Just report on the stock. Some of these people need to close these Twitters because imagine... That guy, he, he knows what people say about him. Imagine, I would like to know how much time a day a guy like Jim Cramer spends on Twitter just reading the hate mail and the bashings because he lets that stuff build up so much 
that all he talks about or half the time he talks about is, you know, everybody hates me and blah, blah, blah. He has got to spend four to six hours a day on Twitter blasting through all of these these hate mail tweets. Am I wrong? It's just ridiculous. You got a job to do, dude. You make a lot of money. Go enjoy it. Go to an AMC theater. <laughs> this one, too, for crying out loud here. Speaking of the markets, we didn't touch on that. I'm sure you guys seen the entire market as a whole today. I mean, something's going to happen. We, the uh, the gosh dang reverse repos, what was it, at eight hundred and forty billion? It's hovering in that $700 billion per day. Um, and then you got here, Wells Fargo tells customers it's shuttering all personal lines of credit. Um, this is not good. The bank is shutting down all existing personal lines of credit in coming weeks and no longer offer the product according to customer letters received by CNBC. The product, 3000 to 100000 But down here, look at this. With the latest move, Wells Fargo warned customers that the account closures may have an impact on your credit score, according to Frequently Asked Questions segment of the letter. Now, I see CNBC is kind of picking that out on the Frequently Asked Questions and blasting it in the article here. But still, what is going on, Wellsies? Shutting her down. Easter, oofta, good night. Hedge fund. This one. This is about two weeks old, but I just love the the title of the article here. Hedge fund torched by AMC. Let's just read this little tiny gigawatt here about inside. Inside Mudrick executives were growing apprehensive as the AMC rally gained steam. The firm's risk committee met. On the evening of June 1, after the stock rate went up to 32 bucks and decided to exit all debt and <laughs> derivative positions the following day, it was a day too late. AMC stock price blew past 40 in the matter of hours on June 2, hitting an intraday high of 72.62. Call options price soared amid a frenzy of trading that Mudder Capital contributed to, and by the end of the week, the winning trade had turned into a bust, costing the fund hundreds of millions. That's a tough damn break. But what a, <laughs> you talk about some bad timing. Imagine how that meeting went. Okay, we're going to get out in the morning. We're all done. Uh, we hit the high, 72.62. Yeah, you're just a day too late there, boys and girls. Um, and then this is a beautiful piece of uh, due diligence here. Important, this is actually why the price is rebounding. Over on AMC stock on the old play. Look at this guy's name. Shout out to Dog Piss River. You know, some of these names are just outstanding. I love all you apes. This is just crazy. Um, I'm going to pop this in here. I don't want to make the video too long. But if you guys have not read this, it's not that long. It's only a few paragraphs, but it's a doozy. Really good explaining what's going on with this stupid price. But you guys, that's it. I'm going to get the heck out of here. I'll leave you with this one here. Um, any of these other ones I'll pop in if you guys want to read the remainder of the articles. But let's see what tomorrow uh, brings. Today was outstanding. Give yourself seriously a pat on the back. That was a lot of fun to watch that. Apes are not going anywhere. We're trending on the, the Twitter with the apes not leaving movement, the whole deal. I love it. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.